Hey everybody, uh, this is, this video is going to be about something that real men will understand. A lot of people won't understand it. I've shed tears before I even attempted to make this video thinking about it. And if I can get through this video without bursting out in tears, that'll be something else. So, no editing around here, no uh, doing something three or four times. Uh, I feel I feel the need to say this, although it's about me, although it's about my dad. Although it's about my granddaddy and his daddy. And although it's about my son, Joe. It's what love used to be like. What used to be important to men. And what this world's tremendously lacking in today. And... Um, I thought about this video before I made it. I've been thinking about it. And I was like, no, I can't put nothing like that out. And then I got to thinking, well, when you start thinking you shouldn't do something is about the time probably you need to be doing it if you're letting any perception come into your head your heart or your head of what others may think somebody needs to hear it so some of you know my dad died when I uh, about five weeks after I had just turned 11 years old uh, my daddy got sick rapidly rapid it was a rapid sickness he got sick and he died and our whole world was shaken I was devastated When you're dealing with the lines, which are is man, when the old line gives up to the younger cub after he's taught him, when the old line of of the pack or group dies. All the lines get upset. There's a difference between the lions and the and the tigers. And the lions and the tigers get upset in different ways. Um, God made he male and female, and they are different. And uh, I don't want to get off. On, on that but I can get through this without crying but maybe if I do cry maybe if I do you, you need to see it maybe if I do I need to cry and this is not depression. This is not uh, sorrow. Uh, this is men and how men uh, love their fathers and how men love their boys. When my dad died, uh, 
I thought life was over for me. And I thought that because I came from a different time where the most important bond for a little boy was with his daddy. Since these bonds have been broken, man has become a feminized, weak, and man cries over things they certainly shouldn't be crying over, and they do not cry over what they should be crying over. But that little 11 year old boy was scared to death. It, it took me a while. Uh, it took me well into adulthood to realize that I was the luckiest little boy in the world. Uh, because I had 11 years with the greatest man in the world. I want to tell all you young tough guys, it's good to cry over what you should cry about. No shame in that. Anybody tells you different, they're weak and they're not a man. I was lucky because I had 11 years with the greatest guy in the world. And some little boys don't have that yeah it's very lucky and I tell my son that every day if you could only be a fly on the wall as a young father today if you could only be a fly on the wall in this house uh, not because there's nothing special or intelligent about me, but because I'm weathered over decade after decade of life. And Joe's lucky because I, I had him late later in my life. I couldn't imagine being a 20 or 20 ish or 30 ish year old man, how Joe would be turning out. Uh, it wouldn't be as good as it is now, I guarantee you that. Uh, I want to just show everybody something. Right? Because uh, when my dad died, I, it was a big insecurity with me. Right? I was the only guy on the block that didn't have his daddy. Uh, I wasn't a big man. I, I still not, you know. Uh, but my dad was. And my son is. And we'll get to that right now. I want to first show you a picture of my granddaddy. I, I was never able to meet him. He died in December of uh, 1940. He was just 47 years old. But this is young Joseph Allen, who Joe is named after. This photo would have been taken at some point during 1917. I hope it comes in a little decent. It's not the best quality in the world. But that's my granddaddy, young Joseph Allen. That's Joseph's great granddaddy. I chose a kind of a blurry picture of my daddy, and I got a reason for that. And it's because whew, 
it shows the blessings I have received from God. It sure does. This is a picture of my dad right here. You can see how he's standing, right? I can do it. And here's a picture of Joe. Now, obviously, that's me beside him, but you can see how he's standing, too. Right? When my son was born, see, I always pray, I want a little boy. I may not have prayed for that had I had my daddy all my life. Y'all just hang on with me. Just hang on with me. But losing my dad was like, I want a little boy, God. And I want that little boy to be like my dad. And lo and behold, I get married pretty late in life. And my wife gives me a little boy. Well, we make him, obviously. But I take her, you know, when she goes to the hospital, and I knew right the day that Joe was born that I was looking at what I had been asking God for. Now I want to show these two pictures again because I'm going to tell you something. Be careful what you think God has in store for you. There's a lot of people, they get mad at God. I don't know why I never did. I've never blamed God for anything that's happened to me because none of it's been God's fault. But there's Joe again. You just see how Joe's natural way is standing. And you just look at him. And there's my daddy. And you just look at him too. Now I told you my grandpa died when he was 47. My daddy was 11 years old. When Grandpa died, I was 11 years old uh, when Daddy died. And uh, folks, you just don't know, I was kind of, it was in the front of my head a lot and certainly in the back of my head all the time. Uh when I turned 47 that I wasn't going to make it no further. Um, see, lions, lion cubs, learn the history of the lions that came before them. So I had knew the, I'd known these things, but I had also known that Young Joseph Allen, who was born in the 1800s, 1894, that he was the youngest boy. I had known that James Van Allen, who was born in 1929, he was the youngest boy. And I had known that the guy here 
Indiana was the youngest boy. And the big guy on the right was the youngest boy. So I'm looking back at this history. And I ain't got too much good I'm thinking about for me. And even after I had Joe. Because by the time I was 47, I believe I had Joe. So, um, the point I'm trying to really make here is this world has lost how I've just shown you I feel. In our house, our champion, Joe here, respects to high heavens this guy here, his daddy, me. This is a national monument and he wrote to him and me. And so is he. We love our line. And that's why Joe Allen is a champion. He has been, been taught to know who the line are and were. And he respects that to no ends of the earth. And the sad thing is, and I want to tell you young guys, when your daddy comes home tonight, or maybe your dad don't live with you, but when you talk to your dad next, ask him, what did grandpa do? Do you know anything? Did grandpa say anything about his daddy? Find out who you are. I can tell you who did what. Uh, the jobs, the different things they did in life. Uh, a lot. I know all, a lot about all of them. Going back way further than my grandfather. Way further. But I the little man in the yellow here was the conduit between him and him. I realize that. I know that. These are things that are sentimental to us. These are things that we cry over. We're, what we're not crying over is spilled milk, uh, hurt feelings. We just don't do it. We just don't do it. We get our feelings hurt, but we don't cry over it. We cry over way bigger things than this generation cries over. And there's way more important things. Things that live on forever in the hearts and the minds of men. But things that get lost and die when there's no hearts and minds of men around to carry them on. Piece this together however 
it works for you. Try to understand what I just did. Be a man. Be strong. Carry yourself with the boldness of a lion. Command the area around you with dignity and honor and strength. And don't let the confusion and the chaos of this sick, bent, twisted place you live called Earth interfere with that because you have the ability to control that. The only way this insane asylum gets you is if you let it in. So I hope this helps somebody out in some small or some big way. Up in this house, we believe in the Lord. We know a little bit about the Bible. We know that great people in the Bible had their kids rustling and tussling around, figuring out the hierarchy. We know that there's a normal order around here that the way th to the way things are supposed to be. And running from things is not the, the good order. Uh, not attempting to give 100% is not in the good order. Looking at failure as an option is not in the good order. We want God to bless you. I do. I'm speaking for me right now. I want God to bless you as much as he blessed me. I've, I've had a great, great time of it. I thought the world had ended on the day my father died. On the day my daddy died. Excuse me. And went through a lot of pain. And little did I know that my dad was never taken at all. And a big piece of him was just saved up, added to, and given to me later on. I always had faith in that. Never had much faith in myself at many times in my life. Do today. So I lost faith in myself a lot, but I never lost faith in God. And he never ceases to amaze me as much crap as I have done and still do. I'm still showered with gifts that are beyond measure. So love to you. If you're a young man and you're having problems, I hope this helps you. If you're a young daddy and you're having problems, I hope this helps you. Much love to everybody. And I pray that God will come knocking on the door and that you open it every single time. Blessings, folks.